Who are the Nephilims? Part 22. I'm Professor Anis Redlingheis of the First Assembly of Yafashua in South Africa, Victoria, Montana. Should you be interested in any of my books which I've written or have any questions, just contact Pastor Rika, my wife, per WhatsApp 0722 or go to my website https yafa yahvah.co.za all small letters. If this is the first time that you are participating in the study, please go to part one because you have missed quite a bit of information. It's also very important to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified about all the other studies that we are currently busy with. May this study be a blessing unto you this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome to Breakfast with Prof. Honest. Hallelujah. What a pleasure to have breakfast and study the Word every morning, every day. So we are continuing where we left off yesterday morning. Understanding that Eve now leaves the Garden of Eden with Adam, two people, but with two different seeds planted in her. Uh, may I just ask, have you discovered something when you read Genesis 4, chapter 4? Have you discovered something? Oh, you became a bit clever now, eh? The word just opens to you. You see, since I was 11 years old, my father taught me, or I was sitting with my father. He was a student of the word. He was never a pastor or anything. I would sit with him and he would do Bible study and I had an interest in it and I would ask a question here or there. Uh, from about 13 years old, I really became interested Whenever my father spoke to pastors and reverends, I would sit in and listen to it. Fifteen years old, I gave my life to Jesus those years. Seventeen years old, I started to preach with my friend, Pastor Rienus Pretorius. He was about five years older than I was. He was about, on that stage, he was about 21, 22. And we became two of the greatest friends for the rest of our life. He only he passed away about two years ago. So... Uh, uh, I grew up in the Word. And one of the things that my father taught me since I was 11, 12, 13 years old was anybody can read the Bible. I can give the Bible to anybody because it's an avenue Eve and his wife as he conceived and we had a child a Cain and said, I forgot, I got a man, I, I got a man from the Lord. This was in 1611. That's, anybody can read this. But my father says, the day that you can read the Bible between the lines and the day that you can read a letter in a word and the day that you can read a word in a sentence, then you can read Bible. It's not how many times you've read the Bible or run through the Bible. It's what knowledge did you obtain? What have you discovered? What you have you discovered what the churches has not taught us all our life? And this is what is important. So throughout my life in the last uh, 56 years, through the grace of Jaffa, our Elohim, I received many, many revelations from the words where Jaffa would just through the Ruach HaKadosh, just revealed His word. Why? Because I was reading between the lines. So I want to encourage you, when you read Bible, don't be in a haste. Take your time. Read it slowly. Read every word. Read every letter. Especially in the 1611 King James Bible, when you read it, and it talks about Jesus. I'm using the word Jesus now. And he says he, and it's a small letter. Take your pen and make it a, a capital letter. Don't leave it like that. Make it a couple of letter. Or even when he refers to God or the Holy Spirit and he says he or they with a small letter. Make it a capital letter. It's very important. Why? Because in that way we give glory unto Yafa our Elohim. 
Right, with all the information that we have now, now we're going to start reading Genesis 4 verse 1, which you already made your own little study. He says in Genesis 4 verse 1, now fasten your seatbelts. I hope you brought a couple because you're definitely going to fall out your chair. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. So what did Adam do? He had intercourse with Eve. Now you must understand, 99.999% of the, of the Bible readers, the people that read the Bible and the churches, never ever gave you the information I've given you in this last 13 weeks or whatever. Especially in the last four weeks or so while we were busy five weeks with Genesis. So when we take the Bible and we've stopped with Genesis, I, I'm, I'm running back on the computer here, I want us to see the chapter, Genesis 3.23, which says, Therefore the Lord God, that's in 33, sent him forth from the God of Eden, till the ground from where he was taken, that's verse 34, uh, 24. So he drove out, so he, that he, so he, it's a small letter he, you can change it right now, that's a capital he, that's the Alpha. He drove out the man, and he, capital letter, again it's a small letter, placed at the end east of the Garden of Eden, cherubs and flaming swords, which turned away uh, every way to keep the way of the, I say, to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, if we stop with Genesis 3, and we are normal Bible readers, what will we do? We will automatically start reading Genesis 4 with 1. And we will read. This is how it's, and I'm going to read it from the 1611. And Adam knew his wife Eve. We don't know anything that happened in the Garden of Eden. Why? Because we were taught that Eve ate an apple. She, we don't even have the, clue, the, the, the faintest clue that she was impregnated by the serpent and Adam already. So when we read Genesis 4 verse 1, and Adam knew his wife Eve. We thought, ah, this lacquer, Adam. Now you're having sex with your wife for the first time since you moved out to the Garden of Eden. Never knowing that they already in the Garden of Eden had intercourse. Why? Because we were blinded by the two trees. The tree of life uh, and the tree of death. You see, that confused us people. You'd never realize the figure of speech, which the one is Yafashua and the other one was Satan or the serpent. So we never had an idea in our life, not the faintest idea, that Eve left the Garden of Eden impregnated with two different seeds. No, 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 no. Here in Genesis 4 verse 1 he said, Adam knew his wife Eve after they left the Garden of Eden. And she conceived and bear Cain. Now we know better. Why? Because we can read between the lines. And the Bible is going to confirm everything which I have taught you in the last three or four weeks. Listen to what he says. And Adam knew his wife. It wasn't the first time. He knew her in the Garden of Eden and he knew her at other times. It's only that Moses now certain, uh, make a certain announcement, oh, that Adam knew his wife. No, no, he already knew her over and over and over again. And Adam knew his wife and she conceived, creating the impression that this sex that they had outside the Garden of Eden is the reason that why Eve conceived Cain. But it's not true. It's not true. You now know it. Let's read the scripture. And Adam knew his wife Eve. He had sex with her. And she conceived and bare Cain and said. Now listen. There's a lot of things that happens here. You don't conceive a woman now. And ten minutes later she's bearing a child. How much time must expand between having intercourse and the birth of a child. Well, roughly nine months. That's nature. So there's a lot of history 
between in this verse one, in this first line of verse one, which we met, we missed it all our lives, because the church has never taught us this, and even and Adam knew his wife, knew Eve his wife, and she conceived. Before she could conceive, there was a time span of nine months where she grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And bear Cain. Cain is the first son. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. That's in the 1933. So what does that say? If I ask you to explain to me what this verse says, what would you say? It's straightforward. She's explaining that the baby she just had is coming from who? From Adam. That's what he says. Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived and bare Cain and said, then she made the announcement, I have gotten this man. It's not the man, it's not Adam. It's mis, in, mis uh, 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 translated. That is man child. Because it's a man child that she's giving birth to. It's not a grown up man. And this is not referring to Abel, uh, Adam. This is referring to Cain. Am I right? Let's read again. Uh, sorry, I read this over and over because I want this to penetrate so you can understand the lies that the church has taught us here. And Adam knew his wife, Eve his wife, as she conceived and bare Cain. And now she's making an announcement about Cain and say, I have gotten a man child, look at my fingers, from the Lord. Why? Why would she make an announcement like that? She's actually saying to Adam, Adam, this is your child. Why would she make an announcement like that? Can I enlighten you? Because this child she just gave birth to looked different to what Eve and Adam look as a race. Adam must have stand there shaking his head. He said, no mama, this can't be true. It's not mine. It's not looking like, no, 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 says if it was, it wasn't say it's not yours. This is the man child that God has given us, the Lord. They use the word Lord, which is God, which is Yahweh. Yeah, you can't, you can't say it's not yours. I received this from the Lord. From You see how she's lying, hiding the truth. That she had intercourse with the Satan, uh, with, with the serpent. You see, he knew that she had intercourse with the with the serpent, but he never thought that the serpent impregnated Eve. And now, the truth is coming forward, because he has the baby, and he looks different. He must have looked a bit like the serpent. Says. Adam's, if uh, you're sure this is mine, because this looks like our neighbor, the serpent. Now listen what she says. The moment Adam must have asked a question, although it's not written there. Between the lines, Adam must have asked a question, Mama, what's this? What has happened here? Oh no, Adam, it's yours. It's this man, child, is from the Lord. The name Lord could not, she couldn't have used the name Lord because the name Lord only came into existence in the 13th century. What do you say about that? In the Restoration Bible, it should have sounded like this. And Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man child from Yapha Almighty. Now she is using Yapha Almighty as a scapegoat for herself because she's in a corner. There's no other way out. She's giving birth and now she convinced Adam it is his. Does it make sense? Don't believe me. Just read the scripture. Verse 2. 
and she again bare his brother Abel. So what do you read between the lines here? She conceived Cain. Tell me, when did Adam uh, knew Eve now? Had intercourse with Eve. Because the church taught us that Adam was the firstborn and years later, uh, sorry, Cain was the firstborn and years later Abel was born. It's not true. Add a Cain and Abel were twins. They were carried simultaneously in the womb of Eve. The seed of serpent, or not the serpent, yeah, yeah, I call it the serpent. It's not the snake, it wasn't a snake then. The serpent seed, she was carrying the serpent seed, and she was carrying Adam's seed. The seed of light, Abel, and the seed of death, Cain. The one looking like the serpent, that's why the announcement in verse 1, I've received this, I've begotten a man-child from Yaffa. It's not the man-child from Yaffa, it's the man-child from the serpent. And now, verse 2 says, and she again bare his brother Abel. Now I want you to go and read this, verse 2, verse 3, and verse 4, and see if you can find the answer yourself. See if you can find the confirmation by yourself that this is twins with one simple question. When did Adam knew or had intercourse with Eve so that Abel could be born? Till tomorrow morning, your father's will is with it, Maranatha, Yafashua is coming back again. Hallelujah.